بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم کیسے ہیں آپ دس از لیکچر نمبر ایٹین لیٹ اسٹارٹ سو فرسٹ وی ٹیک اے ریویو آف پریویس لیکچر ان لاسٹ لیکچر وی ڈسکسڈ ہاؤ ٹو ڈسکرائب اے فریکوینسی ڈسٹریبیوشن یوزنگ فائیو ایلیمنٹس نمبر ون ٹوٹل نمبر آف آبزرویشنز ان ڈیٹا پوائنٹ نمبر ٹو دا میئر آف سینٹرل ٹینڈنسی سچ ایز مین میڈین موڈ and number three measure of dispersion such as variance standard deviation and next we discussed uh, number four which is skewness which measures uh, lack of symmetry whether distribution is equally spreaded around the mean value or it is uh, unequally spreaded and last one the fifth one we discussed the kurtosis uh, uh, which measures the peakedness of the uh, frequency curve so using these five elements we can describe the basic features of any data sets so we can uh, in other words we can describe any frequency distribution using these five basic elements and then in the last lecture we discussed uh, the probability and we introduced the probability and we discussed some basic definitions related to set theory and basic concepts of probability so objectives of the current lecture in this lecture we are going to define the probability in a proper way and we will also discuss its properties and we will also discuss some of the basic questions related to probability and then in the later half of this course uh, in this lecture we will discuss some laws of probability and then we will also discuss some additional examples uh, related to probability so let's start okay let us first define the probability so probability of an event a so let s be a simple space and a be an uh, an event in the simple space s so then the probability of occurrence of event a is defined as probability of a which is denoted by p of a it is equal to number of sample points in a divided by total number of sample points so note that uh, symbolically we can write it as probability of a is equal to number of sample points in a so n a is used to represent number of sample points in a divided by n s which is number of sample points in sample space so symbolically probability of a p of a is equal to n a over n s so now briefly we are going to discuss the properties of probability of an uh, event so probability of s where s is the full sample space it is always equal to 1 so and number 2 for any event a probability of a is uh, lies between 0 and 1 where both 0 and 1 are included so probability can be 0 probability can be 1 and it can also take any value between 0 and 1 so from this uh, property we can see that probability of an event can never be negative or it cannot exceed 1 so if a and b are mutually exclusive events so note that a and b are mutually exclusive events uh, mean that we have an event a and an event b and their intersection is empty so in case of mutually exclusive events probability of a union b is equal to probability of a and plus probability of b we will also explore this third property in greater detail when we would, uh, when we will discuss some laws of probability uh, uh, in the later half of this lecture so these are the three most common properties which are used uh, uh, they are related with probability of any event so let's proceed further so let us discuss one simple example of probability so example is a fair coin is tossed once so we have tossed a coin one time 
so find the probabilities of the following events so first event is an head occurs and second event is a tail occurs so since here our main focus is coin tossing so sample space in this case will contain two elements the two possible outcomes which are the head and the tail so sample space is h and t so total number of sample points they are two first one is head second one is tail so ns is 2 so let us define uh, an event a which represents the occurrence of head so then this event a will contain uh, only this entry h h for head and number of sample points in a are uh, one in this case only head so n a is one so we want to find the probability of this event that head occurs so it means we are interested in finding the probability of a so according to definition of probability of an event a it is equal to number of sample points in a divided by total number of sample points in the sample space s so here as far as this particular example is concerned number of sample points in a are one there is only one sample point which is head and number of sample points in s is they are two so head and tail so according to this formula we will write uh, n a instead of n a one and s divided by instead of n s we will write two so one by two is the required probability or prob uh, probability of getting an head when a fair coin is tossed so 1 by 2 is 0 0.5 or we can write in uh, percentage form which is 50 percent so probability of head is 50 percent so now we want to find the probability of occurrence of a tail when a fair coin is tossed so again let us define another event b which represents the occurrence of a tail so the outcomes uh, this tail so b event has only one outcome which is t so number of sample points in b is one which is tail only one so probability of b is number of sample points in b divided by number of sample points in s so according to this formula nb is 1 and ns is 2 so 1 by 2 which is 0 0.5 or it is also 50 percent so when a fair coin is tossed so probability of occurrence of head is 50 percent and probability of occurrence of tail is also 50 percent so we can say that uh, since the coin is fair so probability of head is same as probability of uh, tail so when a coin is fair coin is tossed so head has same chance of occurrence as uh, tail has so this is how to solve some basic uh, problem related to probability so let us discuss uh, one uh, more example so in this example a fair die is rolled once so we are rolling a die so find the probabilities of the following events so in part a the question is an even number occurs in part b a number greater than 4 occurs in part c a number greater than 6 occurs so since here uh, the question is about rolling a die so sample points the sample space will contain all possible outcomes when a die is rolled so when a die is rolled we know that die has six faces so it means the total number of sample points are six and sample space will contain the uh, number of all possible uh, outcomes which are one two three four five and this one six so total number of sample points in this case are six so ns is six so now come to this first part a so it is asking us to find the probability uh, when an even number occurs uh, 
while rolling a die uh, once. So part A is an even number occurs. So let us define an event A. So let A be an event which represents that an even number occurs when a fair die is rolled. So we can see that an even number mean from this uh, sample space 2 is an even number, 4 is also an even number and the third even number is 6. So it means A can take any of these three possible values. So 2, 4 and 6. And total number of sample points in this case is uh, case uh, we have 2, 4 and 6. So there are 3 sample points. So number of sample points in A are 3 and A is 3. So according to probability formula, probability of A is equal to number of sample points in A, our uh, total number of sample points are number of sample points in S. So N A is 3 where N S is 6. So 3 over 6 is 1 by 2 or 0 0.5 or 50 percent. And part B says that a number greater than 4 occurs. So in order to find the probability that a number greater than 4 occurs when a fair die is rolled. So we have to define another event B. So let B be an event which shows a number greater than 4 occurs when a fair die is rolled. So number of possible, uh, possible outcomes of this event B are number greater than 4. So greater than 4 mean from your sample space look at the numbers which are greater than 4. So greater than 4 are number 5 and number 6. So it means these two are the uh, number of possible outcomes of this event B. So we can say that number of sample points in event B are 2. So NB is equal to 2. So probability of event B is NB divided by NS. So number of sample points in B divided by number of sample points in uh, S which is sample space. So NB is 2, sample space has 6 points. So 2 over 6 it is 1.3, 1 over 3 are as it is equal to 0 0.333 or 33.33 percent. So it means there is 33.33 percent chance or probability that uh, when a fair die is rolled the a number greater than 4 will occur. So a number greater than 4 will occur uh, its probability of occurrence is 33.33 percent. So now come to the last part, the third one C part, a number greater than 6 occurs. So here is the C part, a number greater than 6 occurs. So let us define a third event C, so let C be an event which shows a number greater than 6 occurs. So look at this sample space, we can see from this sample space that the total number of possible outcomes are 6 which are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So from this sample space we can see that number greater than 6 uh, there is no possibility of uh, getting a number greater than 6 because a fair die has 6 faces so uh, there is no chance of getting a number greater than 6. So it means in this case the event C will be empty. So in other words the total number of sample points in C they are 0. So using the definition of probability, probability of event C is equal to number of sample points in C divided by number of total number of sample points in S. So 0 divided by 6 which is 0 or 0%. 0 so we can say that there is 0% chance of getting a number greater than 6 when a fair die is rolled. There is one very important point to note here is that usually a die has six faces but uh, in some cases we can have a die uh, having eight faces. So in that case in those questions uh, it will be properly specified in questions that an eight sided uh, die is rolled. 
so if it is not mentioned that how many faces a die has so usually it is assumed that it is the usual die or uh, containing uh, six sides or six faces and the faces are one two three four five six so these are the numbers but in some cases we can have a die having eight faces or having uh, more than eight faces so usually six and eight faces are usually used but if the, it is specified in question that the die is of eight faces then we will uh, construct our sample space according to total number of sample uh, total number of possible outcomes in case of eight sided fair die so in that case the sample space will be one two three up to eight but if it is not mentioned in the question then we will assume that a die has the usual six faces uh, where each face represents a number from 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 6. So, so let us discuss another example of the probability. So, if two fair dice are thrown, so two fair dice are thrown, so what is the probability of getting a double 6 and what is the probability of getting a sum of 11 or more dots. So these are the two parts which we have to solve uh, in this example so uh, which indicates that uh, which is related to uh, two dice. So when two dice are thrown what is the probability of getting a double six. So here when two dice are thrown so sample space contains these points these 36 points so 1 1 1 1 mean on both die 1 occurs and next 1 2 mean on die 1 number 1 occurs and on die 2 number 2 occurs so when the both dies are rolled so on die 1 1 occurs on die 2 3 occurs and next 1 4 1 5 1 6 and next on die 1 2 occurs die 2 1 occurs and so on 2 6 3 1 3 2 3 6 and last one is 6 occurs on both die. So both dies, uh, dies uh, has 6. Uh, so when we tossed both dies, so we get 6 on the first die as well as 6 on the second die. So counting all these possible outcomes, we can see that the total number of sample points uh, are 36 in this case. So we can also... Uh, get this number by 6 raised to power 2 which is 6 cross 6 and it is 36. So when 3 dice are rolled so total number of sample points will be 6 raised to power 3 so which will be 6 cross 6 cross 6 so 6 6 36 into 6 2 1 6. So similarly for 4 dice the total number of points will be 6 raised to power 4. So this is the general formula in order to get the total number of sample points when any number of dice are rolled. So in case of n dice, so 6 raised to power n. If n is 1, 6 raised to power 1, it means there are total 6 possible outcomes. If n is 2, it means 2 dice are rolled. So total number of sample points will be 6 power 2, which is 36 and so on. So we can use, we can take different values instead of n in order to get uh, sample points for different number of dies so okay coming back to this problem so here to our sample space has 36 possible outcomes so question is what is the probability of getting a double six so we will define an event a which represents that a double six occurs which shows that double six occurs when two fair dies are rolled so from this sample space we can see that this double six occurs only once in this case so it means this is the possible outcome of this event a so six six only one possible outcome in this uh, case so number of sample points in a it is only one so probability of this event will be uh, it is number of sample points in a divided by total number of sample points in S. So 1 divided by 36, we get 
over 36. So 1 over 36 is the required probability that probability of getting a double 6 is 1 over 36. So now the second part is the sum of 11 or more dots. So in order to answer this question we need to uh, we need to define another event B so let B is any other event which shows a sum of 11 or more dots occur so sum of 11 or more dots so from this sample space you have to check how many uh, possible outcomes which can uh, which is related to this event B so we can see that so in this case the 5 6 5 plus 6 the sum of these two dots is 11 and 6 and 5 uh, again 11 and uh, 6 plus 6 it is 12 so sum of 11 or more so 11 or more so from this dot you can see that here sum of these two is 1 plus 1 2 so it means this first order pair is not satisfying this condition that sum should be 11 or it should be more similarly 1 2 or 2 1 2 2 1 3 so here 4 5 3 6 9 5 4 9 6 plus 3 9 6 plus 4 10 5 plus 5 10 6 plus 4 10 so all the numbers most of the numbers in this sample space uh, their sum is less than 11 so only these are the three possible outcomes so 5 plus 6 the sum is 11 and 6 plus 5 the sum is 11 and last one is 6 plus 6 the sum is 12 so these are the three possible outcomes of this event B so that's why these have been put here so B is equal to 5 6 6 5 and 6 6 so total number of sample points in B are 3 so 1 2 and 3 so probability of B is n B over n s so n B is 3 divided by number of sample points total number of sample points they are 36 so 3 over 36 or you can simplify it so 3 12 so 1 over 12 so this is the required result so this is how you can solve simple probability questions so here we have another example so a fair coin is tossed three times so a coin is tossed three times so what is the probability that at least one head appears and next what is the probability that more heads than tails appear and third one is exactly two tails appears two tails appear so since the coin is tossed three times so our sample space will contain head on first head on second and head on third so we have to write the number of all possible outcomes when three coins are tossed so head on all three uh, coins then head on first two tail on third then head tail head head on first tail on second and head on third then tail head 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 tail 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 head tail 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 and tail on all the three uh, coins so now if we count all these one two three four five six seven eight so total number of sample points in this case is eight and remember that a coin has two faces so in this case three coins are tossed so 2 raised to power 3 so 2 raised to power 3 mean 2 into 2 into 2 so 2 to the 4 to the 8 so when a coin is tossed two times so we will use this formula 2 raised to power 2 which is 2 cross 2 it is 2 when it is tossed one time so 2 raised to power 1 is 2 so general formula for finding the total number of sample points when a coin is tossed uh, n number of times it is 2 raised to power n if n is 2 so we will write 2 raised to power 2 which is gives us 4 so when n is 1 so we get 2 raised to power 1 which is 2 and when n is 3 2 raised to power 3 we get 8 so similarly when 4 coins are tossed 
so it means 2 raised to power 4 so this n is replaced with 4 so this is 2 into 2 so we have to multiply 2 4 times so 2 to the 4 4 to the 8 8 to the 16 so total number of sample points when 4 coins are tossed they will be 16 and similarly you can calculate the total number of sample points when a coin is tossed any number of times so here as far as this particular example is concerned the coin is tossed three times so total number of sample points in this case are eight where head occurs on all three coins and then head end and tail and next head tail head next tail head head and last one is tails on all three coins so now part a is at least one head appears so let us define an event a so let a be an event which represents that at least one head appears when three coins are tossed uh, when one coin is tossed three times or three coins are tossed once so this is uh, around the same so you have a coin you tossed it three times or you have three coins you toss them uh, once so both experiments are the same so here a fair coin is tossed three times this means that a coin uh, one coin is tossed three times or we can write it uh, alternatively as three coins are tossed once so this is these two statements are the same so at least one head appears so let us define an event a which represents that at least one head appears when a coin is tossed three times so at least one head mean one head appears or more than one head appears so it means we have to consider here here as far as this outcome is concerned one head appears and here one head appears and two are the tails one head appears two are the tails and next we have to consider also the possibility of two heads because our question is at least one head at least mean one or more than one so this will be also included this will be included this will be included so last one is three heads so which is also satisfying this condition that at least one head appears so it means we have to consider all these uh, possibilities in this case so uh, this event a will have these outcomes so these seven outcomes so number of sample points in a are just count these these are seven in number so n a is seven so in order to calculate probability of an event a it is n a over n s so n a is seven and number of sample points in s are eight so n over eight uh, sorry this is seven over eight so this is the required probability of getting at least one head when a coin is tossed three times so let us move to the next part so next part is more heads than tails appear so let us define another event b which represents that more heads occur than tails so more heads mean the number of heads should be more than the number of tails so here you can see that uh, as far as this first element first outcome of this s is concerned it has there are three heads and zero tails so it means heads are occurring more than the number of tails here in the second case there are two heads and only one tail so it means this second uh, option it is also satisfying this condition that more heads than the tails and here we have two heads and one tail two heads one tail and here we have only one head but there are two tails so it means this condition is not being satisfied in this case so we will not consider this one so we have to consider only these first four uh, uh, outcomes why because if we look at this one so here again there is only one head two tails two tails one head and all three tails so as far as our event is concerned it is more heads than tails so we have to consider only the first four so just write them here so total number of sample points in b they are four so probability of b is n b over n s 
so nb is 4 where ns is 8 so 4 by 8 is 1 by 2 0 0.5 or 50 percent so probability of getting more heads than tails is 50 percent so now move to the third part c exactly two tails appears so two tails appear so let us define another event c which represents uh, that exactly two tails appear so two tails appear uh, here focus on the first outcome in this s so we can see that uh, all three heads are uh, they have appeared so it means this is not satisfy, uh, satisfying this condition that exactly two tails appear so move to the next here again we have one tail so this is also not satisfying the condition one tail one tail so we have to discard first four and look at this next entry the fifth one so here we have exactly two tails although we have the third one head but two tails mean we are uh, this condition is being satisfied so we will write this number here HTT and then here again we have two tails THT and here again we have two tails one head so write uh, so these are the three numbers uh, three outcomes which are satisfying this condition so number or total number of sample points in C in this case they are three so probability of C is NC over NS NC is 3, NS is 8, so 3 by 8. So let us consider another example. So an employer wishes to hire 3 people from a group of 15 applicants. So these applicants include 8 men and 3 women, all of whom are equally qualified to fill the position. So if he selects the three person at random so what is the probability that all three will be men so from this question we can see that there are total 50 applicants uh, including eight men and three women and they are equally qualified so it means we can select either a, a males a men have uh, they have the same chance uh, of being selected as the women uh, have. So question is, uh, if he selects three person at random, so out of these 15, three are selected. So at random mean uh, they are selected in such a way that uh, chances of uh, selection of all the individuals they are same so what is the probability that all three will be men so here since we have total 15 applicants we have to select three so from 15 we have to select three so it means uh, in order to select three persons uh, we have to take uh, the rule of combination why we are using this rule because selecting three people uh, three people from the 15 since uh, the order doesn't matter here so we can use the combination rule which we have studied in our previous lecture and if we have to select these three individuals out of 15 by uh, following a certain order then in that case we can use the permutation rule but here since we have to select three persons uh, at random uh, out of 15 so we can use the combination rules so in order to find here a uh, total number of sample points we will use this rule so total number of ways in which three people can be selected out of 15 this is given by 15 c3 so 15 c3 we know that uh, ncr this is also written as ncr so its formula is n factorial over r factorial into n minus r whole factorial so as far as this particular problem is concerned we want to calculate 15 c3 so it means instead of n we have 15 factorial 3 factorial 15 minus 3 whole factorial so this is 15 factorial 3 factorial 
15 minus 3 is 12 factorial. So we can write it as 15 into 14 into 13 into 12, 11, so on. So 12, 11, 10, 9. So I have written 12 factorial to represent all these numbers. So here we have 3 factorial which is 3 into 2 into 1 and we have this 12 factorial as well. So cancel this 12 factorial with 12 factorial. So we are left with 15 into 14 into 13 in the numerator and in denominator we have 3 into 2 into 1. So just simplify these two expressions. So 3, 5, 15 and 2, 7, the 14. So now multiply this 5, 7 and 13. So 5 multiply with 7 multiply with 13. So 13 into 7 is 91. So it means 5 cross 91. So 5 into 91 is 5 in 1 the 5, 5, 9, 45. So we get total number of sample points. In this case, they are 4, double 5. So we can also use calculator to find this NCR or 15C3 and we can also use Microsoft Excel to calculate this 15C3 as well. So uh, let us calculate this 15C3 in Microsoft Excel first before proceeding further. So suppose we are interested in calculating this 15C3. So this can be calculated by using combin command. So you can see from this Excel tooltip that it is asking us uh, that this combin returns, returns the number of combinations for a given number of items. So here just put the parenthesis and then it is asking us to provide the number. So for the number just type 15 and then comma the second argument is number chosen. So comma 3. So this will calculate, this will give us 15C3. So combine 15 comma 3, press enter. So the result is 455, which we have calculated using this formula. So if you want to calculate 15C3, so just type combine 15 comma 3 and press enter. So it is 455 or suppose if you are interested in calculating 3C0. So in order to calculate 3C0 just write combine and then first argument is the number 3 then comma number chosen is 0 press enter so we get 1. So 3C0 is 1. So similarly 3C1 can be calculated as combin 3C1, so it is 3. So similarly, you can calculate this uh, any uh, choosing any numbers from a total of uh, any outcome uh, using this combin command. So let us move back to the main question. So let us discuss another example. So six white balls and four black balls which are indistinguishable apart from their color they are placed in a bag so in a bag we have six white balls and four black balls so this is important so if six balls are taken uh, out from the bag so it means six are selected so find the probability of getting three white and three black balls out of these six selected balls. So probability of getting three white and three balls. So here the total number of possible equally likely outcomes are. So since we have six white and four black balls, so six plus four a total of ten balls in this case. So total ten balls. So out of 10, we have selected six balls. So we can select these six, uh, these six balls, they can be selected out of 10, and these six can be uh, any of these uh, 10 balls. 
So we have total 10 balls in the bag. So out of these 10s, any 6 can be selected. So question is how to select, or any, what is the required, in how many ways we can select 6 balls out of 10 balls. Uh, so actually it has, uh, it is, uh, there are a large number of ways in which we can select 6 balls out of a total of 10 balls because the balls can be first 6 or 1, 2, 3 up to 5 and 7th ball, 1, 2, 3 up to 5 and the 8th one and 1, 2, 3 the first 5 and the ninth one and first 5 and the 10th one or the balls can be 1 skipping the second ball so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 or 1 skipping the second 1, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 8th one so similarly, once you are finished with this option 1, you can skip this first ball and you can uh, start with selecting 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th ball or the next possibility can be 2nd ball, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, skipping the 7th, 8th, then 2nd to 6th, the 9th ball, 2nd to 6th and then the 10th ball then start with 3 so you can see that there are number of possible uh, ways in which we can select 6 balls out of 10 so how to calculate the total number of possible outcomes so we can use the rule of combinations so total number of sample points in this case they are can they can be easily found uh, by using this rule of combination so which is 10 C 6 so 10 C 6 so it is uh, can, it can be calculated by using this formula NCR which is uh, which can also be written in this way NCR so it is N factorial our R factorial N minus R whole factorial so as far as our case is concerned we have 6 C 10 so it will be 10 factorial our 6 factorial 10 minus 6 whole factorial or further simplifying it 10 factorial 6 factorial and this 10 minus 6 we have 4 factorial or further this is 10 into 9 into 8 into 7 into 6 into 5 4 3 4 3 2 1 so 6 5 3 2 1 we can write it as 6 factorial so here we have 6 factorial and this 4 factorial I'm writing this 4 factorial as 4 3 2 1 so you can see that this 6 factorial is cancelled with 6 factorial then this 4 into 2 this is 8 this is cancelled with this 8 and next we can cancel 3 3 the 9 so you can see that 10 into 3 into 7 so this is the uh, simplified form of this expression 10 c6 so 10 3 30 so 30 into 7 we get 2 1 0 2 10 so which is our required result so we can also calculate this combination using Microsoft Excel or using simple calculator so let us first uh, move to the Microsoft Excel and uh, we'll demonstrate how we can calculate this combination there is one simple built-in function in Excel which can be used in order to calculate this 10 C 6 R N C R so let us move to the MS Excel. So suppose we want to find 10 C6. So in order to calculate it, there is one built-in function which is combine. So you can see from this Excel tooltip that it is asking us that this command returns the number of combinations for a given number of items. So how many possible combinations can be obtained? so so first is the number so here we will write 10 and after comma the second option is number chosen so we have to select 6 out of 10 so the number chosen is 6 that's it press enter you will get 10 c 6 so it is same to 10 which we have calculated using the simple formula so similarly you can calculate any combinations so 3c2 for example so for this the command is combine uh, and then 3 and the number selected is 2 so 3c2 
it is 3 or similarly you can select uh, 4C2 suppose so so 4C2 so in order to calculate it so combine 4 comma 2 press enter so 4C2 is 6 so this is how we can use this built-in combine function in order to calculate this combination so 4C2 so let us move to the uh, our main question in the PowerPoint slide okay here total number of sample points uh, when six balls are selected out of ten they are two one zero so our question is find the probability of getting three white and three black balls so let us define an event A which represents that three white and three black balls are occurred so number of sample points in A will be calculated uh, as so look at here so there are six white balls and four black balls so just write six and four the total number of six total number of white balls and total number of black balls and now question is we want to select three white so these three white they will be selected from the white balls so since there are six white balls so we will write here three so six c3 it means three white balls they have been selected out of six white balls and similarly we have to select three black balls so these three will be selected from a total of uh, four black balls which are available so out of four we have to select three black balls so this is how to find the total number of sample points so then we have to multiply this total 63 yani in how many ways three white balls they are selected out of a total of six white and in how many ways three black balls are selected out of uh, four black balls so once we have this number in hand and second one in hand then we will use the multiplication rule to get the total number of sample points of this event a so 6c3 multiplied with 4c3 you can calculate 6c3 using the excel and 4c3 as well or using simple calculator or you can even calculate these numbers by using this formula using a simple algebra so this is the result is 80 so n a number of sample points in this event a are 80 so now we want to find probability of a which is n a over n s 6 c3 4 c3 or 6 and 4 they are total 10 and this 3 and 3 total 6 or 10 c 6 which is 210 so 80 over 210 the 0 is cancelled with 0 8 over 20 so this is the required probability of getting 3 white and 3 black balls when 6 balls are drawn out of a total of 10 balls uh, which are uh, which are available in a bag and uh, these 10 balls uh, are containing 6 white and 4 black balls so now we discuss some laws of probability so if a is an impossible event so then probability of a it will be 0 so for any impossible event a the probability will be zero so zero means it has zero percent chance of occurrence or it has there is no chance of occurrence of this event a so it means a is impossible event so next is if a complement a dash this a dash is also used for complement or usually a and we write c in the superscript c stands for complement or usually dash is used so a dash is complement of an event a so relative to sample space s so then probability of a complement will be 1 minus probability of a so here in the venn diagram we have this rectangle which is showing the total sample space s and here we have an event a so and other than this event a this 
white portion in this box this is called a complement this full portion this white portion this full portion this is called a complement and remember that the definition of a complement is s minus a so just subtract a from total s so from this case you can see that since this a and a complement they are disjoint disjoint mean there is nothing common uh, between event a and event a complement so e probability of this a complement will be uh, total probability which is 1 and 1 minus this uh, probability of a or actually if you take probability of probability of left hand side as well as probability of right hand side so probability of left hand side a complement and probability of right side s minus a so here we have simple rule that probability of first and probability of second so note that this probability of s is 1 so this is 1 minus probability of a so it means probability of a complement is 1 minus probability of a so probability of a complement is 1 minus a or you can from this result you can switch the role of a and a complement so just shift interchange their position so shift this probability of a from left hand side to right hand side so its sign is negative here from right hand side to left hand side so currently it is on right hand side with negative sign so when it is shifted to left hand side it will become positive so we are left with one and here we have probability of a complement with positive sign when it is shifted to right hand side it will become minus so this is another rule so probability of a is one minus probability of a complement and probability of a complement is one minus probability of a so next addition laws so law of additions so if a and b are any two events defined in a simple space s so then the probability of their union a union b so it is equal to probability of a plus probability of b minus probability of a intersection b so let us look at this uh, Venn diagram so here we have event A event B so suppose we want to find the probability of A union B so A union B is this full portion this shaded region this is showing us the A union B so probability of this full shaded portion or a union b this is equal to probability of a so probability of a means we have to consider this full area this one probability of a mean this full area a so then we have to add to it the probability of b so then this again full area of b so but currently you can see that this middle area it is being counted uh, twice once in case of probability of a so this area is counted this middle area and second in case of probability of b so since this is counted twice so that's why we have to subtract it from this sum so this middle area is the common portion of a and b which is a intersection b so it means we have to subtract it once from this sum so probability of a union b is probability of a plus probability of b minus probability of their intersection that is a intersection b so there is one corollary or simple result which have been derived from this main result is if a and b are two mutually exclusive events two mutually exclusive events mean there is nothing common that their intersection is empty it is phi empty set so if a and b are two mutually exclusive uh, exclusive events defined in a simple space s so then 
probability of A union B, this is equal to probability of A plus probability of B. So here you can see that in this Venn diagram, the intersection of A and B is empty. So you can write this empty set in this way or in this way. So there is nothing common in both events A and B. So it will be this prob first event, the probability of A, and then we have to write this second event, which is probability of B. So now, since there is nothing common between the two, so there is no need to subtract this quantity, which is A intersection B, because A intersection B is zero or empty set in this case. So this is another formula. If they are mutually exclusive, then probability of A union B is probabil uh, probability of A plus probability of B. And if they are not mutually exclusive or there is something common, so then the probability of A union B is probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. So if we have three events, if A, B, C are any three events defined in a sample space S, so then probability of A union B union C. So then probability of A union B union C, it is defined as probability of A plus probability of B plus probability of C minus A intersection B minus B intersection C minus C intersection A and plus A intersection B intersection C. So here is the Venn diagram. So when we write this probability of A, it means we have covered this full set A. So note that this full set A, it is also contains this middle portion which is common both in A and B. Similarly, it also contains this middle portion which is common in both A and C. So when we write probability of A, it means it is this full area A and then probability of B, it means this full area B. So look at here, it means this we have counted this middle portion which is common to both A and B twice. So we have to subtract it here. And similarly, when we add this probability of C as well, so it means we have to subtract this common portion which is common in both B and C as well as common to A and C. So that's why this A, B and C and C and A, this intersection of probability of B intersection C is subtracted as well as probability of C intersection A is subtracted. And as far as this middle portion is concerned, this one, so you can see that this middle portion, it is common to all three. So when we write here probability of A, it means we have counted this portion. Similarly, when we write here probability of B, we have again counted this portion. So this portion is count counted twice. Then probability of C, so this part is also occurring in C. So we have counted it thrice. So when we subtracted this A intersection B, so this part, when this full part is subtracted, it means uh, this was subtracted once. When we subtracted this A intersection C, so this part is again subtracted. So when we subtracted this B intersection C, so this middle part, it was added three times when we write probability A, B and C. And when we subtracted these three portions, so it is subtracted again three times. So it means up till here, up till this term, uh, we have added these all portions, but this middle portion, it was added three times and it was subtracted three times. So it means we have not counted this middle portion yet. And this middle portion, it is what? It is the intersection of A, B and C. So that's why we have to add this middle portion, which is A intersection B and intersection C. So this is how we can extend the law, addition law of two events to three events A, B and C. Similarly, this law can be generalized to four events, five events or in general we can say that we can generalize it to n events. So similarly, if A, B and C are three 
mutually exclusive events defined in a sample space S, then probability of A union B union C, it is probability of A plus B plus C. So we can also express this result using Venn diagram. So it is pro event A, event B and event C. So you can see that there is nothing common uh, in these three events or we can say that their intersection is empty. So in this case A intersection B intersection C it is empty and also there is nothing common between A and B, nothing common between A and C, nothing common between B and C. So in this case probability of A union B union C it is the sum of their individual probabilities. So these are called the addition laws. So now let us discuss the structure of a deck of playing cards. In most of the uh, statistics and probability there are several questions which are related to the cards. So it is better to have the full idea of a uh, deck of playing cards. So here in this slide uh, I have put the full details related to uh, the cards. So total cards in an ordinary deck they are 52 and there are four suits. Uh, first suit is spades, second is heart, third is diamond, fourth one is club and there are 13 cards in each of these suits. So and face value of these 13 cards in each suit is uh, they are ace, ace stands for 1 and then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 up to 10. So these are 10 cards and next 11th one is called jack usually j is used to represent jack and then 12th one is queen q is used and last one is king where k is used. So here in this picture we have the cards so this is the first one is the first row of the cards they are the club cards so you can see that we have the ace so a is usually den uh, used to denote ace then number two three four five six seven eight nine ten and next jack queen and king so these are the 13 cards so in next suit we have spade the same 13 cards 1 2 3 up to uh, 10 so instead of 1 we have an ace card and next we last 3 are the jack queen and king and next we have the hearts uh, and last one is diamond so you can see that we have 13 cards in the first suit 13 in the second 13 in the third and 13 in the fourth fourth so 13 plus 13 plus 13 plus 13 so it is 13 plus 13 plus 13 plus 13 which is total of 52 cards so another point to note that are that the club cards and the spades they are black in color so it means there are total of 13 plus 13 26 cards are black whereas the hearts and diamond cards they are red in color so it means 13 and 13 so 26 cards are red in color so this is the basic structure of uh, and a deck of ordinary playing cards so now we will cover certain questions which are related to this cards and remember that you have to keep in mind the total st uh, the structure of these cards in order to answer these questions so we uh, there are certain more points you can see that there is one king in each of these suits so total of four kings so one king in each of these suits similarly one queen in each of these suits and one jack similarly one ten in each of these suits so for each type we have four numbers four aces four twos four threes four kings four jacks four queens
so now we have a special names as well so honor cards are the ace card the 10 jack queen and king so these cards are called the honor cards and the face cards are those cards on which we have different faces so you can see that we have pictures or faces on jack queen and king so these three are called the face cards and there are certain games of cards so some of the most popular games are the bridge game and the poker game so now we are going to cover some related questions which are related to the cards so example is if a card is drawn from an ordinary deck of playing cards find the probability that it is a red card or find the probability that it is a diamond card or it is a, a 10 card or the card is a king or a face card so first the total number of playing cards are 52 so our sample space is 52 in this case so n is total number of sample points they are 52 and sample space is the set of all 52 cards so number of sample points they are 52 so now coming to the part a a red card so what is the probability of getting a red card so define an event a let a be an event which represents that a red card is drawn uh, from a deck of ordinary playing cards so you can see that you know that there are total uh, 13 are the hearts and 13 are the diamonds so diamonds and hearts they constitute they constitute the red cards so it means there are 26 cards which are red and the remaining 26 are black cards so number of sample points in a are 26 so probability of a is 26 over 52 or it is 1 over 2 now uh, the card is a diamond so define an event b so let b be an event that card is a diamond so you can see that there are four suits so uh, one of the suits is diamond containing 13 cards so if the chosen card is a diamond so it means it can be any of these 13 cards it can be ace of diamond the two of diamond three of diamond 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10th of diamond, jack, queen, king. So it can be any of these 13 uh, diamond cards. So it means number of possible uh, outcomes uh, or NB, number of sample points of this event B, they are 13. So probability of B is 13 over 52 or 13. For the 52, it is 1 by 4 so third part is what is the probability that card is a 10 card so let us define another event c which represents that the drawn card is a 10 so note that there are 10 occurs in each of the four suits so 10 occurs in club 10 occurs in spade 10 occurs in hearts 10 occurs in uh, diamond so it means the total number of sample points in c are 4 so probability of c is nc over ns so 4 over 52 so you can cancel it 4 1 the 4 4 13 the 52 so it is 1 by 13 so next card is a king so define an event d so let d be an event which represents that the drawn card is a king card again uh, out of these 54 cards we know that in each of the suits we have one king so king in spade king in club king in heart king in diamond so there are four kings so it means the total number of sample points in this event d they are four so probability of d is 4 over 52 which is 1 over 13 and next we have uh, to find the probability that the selected card is a face card so we can see that face card mean on which there are uh, faces uh, or we have uh, pictures picture card is also called face card so there are three cards in each of the suits which are face card and these are the jack queen and king 
So three cards in first suit, three in the second, three in the third, and three in the fourth. So if we define an event E, which represents that a face card is drawn, so the total number of sample points in E will be 12, which is 3 in the first suit, 3 in the second, 3 in the third, and 3 in the fourth. So Jack, King, Queen, these are the three face cards. So in four suits, so we have 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, which is uh, which equals 12 so probability of e is equal to 12 over 52 or you can cancel it with 4 4 3 the 12 4 13 the 52 so 3 over 13 is the probability of getting a face card out of uh, a 52 playing cards so this is how you can use you can solve simple probability questions so the only thing you need to know is the structure of a deck of playing cards so once you know the structure of uh, playing cards then you can answer any of the questions which are related to the probability so let us review the main concepts which we have covered in today's lecture so in today's lecture we have defined the probability in a proper way and then we discussed its properties that probability it lies between 0 and 1 probability can be 0 it can be 1 it can never be negative it cannot exceed 1 so and probability of total sample space s is 1 and then we discussed some basic questions related to the probability and then we have discussed some laws of probability and then uh, further uh, questions related to the uh, deck of ordinary playing cards so in the next lecture we will study uh, conditional probability and before studying the conditional probability we will cover some more examples of probability and then we will discuss conditional probability and then we will discuss independent and dependent events and we will also cover their related examples so till then, Allah Hafiz.